So we've been looking at entropy and how we can use our entropy to start to determine whether a reaction is going to be spontaneous, whether it's going to go all on its own. And it's involved kind of two different pieces of information. We need to know how has the entropy of our reaction changed, the actual disorder of our particles in the chemicals, as well as what effect does that have then on the particles around it based on the change in the enthalpy, the heat going in or out of our chemicals. There is another variable we need to talk about, and that is G. G stands for Gibbs free energy. And really, the whole goal here is to get a number, right? To be able to say, okay, here's our free energy of our system. Based upon all of these things going on at the same time, here is our number that tells us, is it spontaneous? Is it not spontaneous? And if it is spontaneous, how much energy do we have to do stuff, to do work? And it is named after this guy by the name of J. Willard Gibbs from 1839 to 1903. Uh, he said that the maximum non-pressure volume work, so not expanding things or contracting things, pushing out about against the universe, that the maximum amount of work you can do in your system is a function of our enthalpy and entropy. And we know that, we've already talked about that. That's what we were working on in 20.2. Uh, but he took the step further. He said, we can get it boiled down to a singular mathematical value. And he called it our G, delta G, and it's our Gibbs free energy. So the G here is just the free energy of the system, the energy we have available to us to do stuff, to do work. Right now, we're using this term loosely. Next unit, we'll come back and talk about the actual electrical work that we can use for our voltaic or electrical cells. That's common. Hold a thought, but that's kind of where we're heading. Where again, delta H, well, you know that. That's the change in the system's enthalpy. And delta S is the system's entropy. And so what's nice is we kind of lose the surrounding part. We're just going to look at what is going on with just the chemicals, look at all of just the chemical reaction and figure out, get a number that tells us, is it spontaneous or not, based upon this delta G, this free energy that we now have to do stuff. And so it turns out that delta G is related to our delta S of the universe or the entropy of the universe in that it's still going to kind of predict which way we're kind of moving. So it's a lot like enthalpy in that a negative enthalpy, right? Negative delta H, exothermic, releases energy. A negative delta G means we're going to lose free energy. We're just giving the free energy or the, the energy to do work away. It's leaving. It's exiting the system. So if your delta G of the reaction is negative, less than zero, that is spontaneous. As it is written under standard conditions, it's going to go all by itself. If your delta G is zero, we're at equilibrium and there's no longer any measurable difference or change occurring. There's no free energy to be gained or lost as we have already reached equilibrium. We've kind of reached the maximum amount of energy change that we're going to be seeing because now it's opposite and equal. And then if delta G is greater than zero, that process is non-spontaneous in the direction that it's written under our standard conditions. And so over here, a fun picture of Lavoisier looking at human respiration as a form of combustion. Um, it's got this guy exhaling into a big long tube and he's doing a bunch of, yeah, looking at spontaneous reactions. A reaction is always gonna proceed spontaneously, a spontaneous reaction always moves toward the minimum in free energy or the most negative free energy it can get. It's going to try to give, if it's a spontaneous reaction, it's always going to try to give its free energy away spontaneously, negative delta G, which corresponds to our equilibrium. Oh, it's going to come back. There's going to be a K. Not quite yet, but there's going to be a K coming back because equilibrium does play a factor here. Just a little. <laughs> but... It is still a capital letter. Delta G is the change in the free energy of the system as a measure of the spontaneity of our process and the useful energy available from the change. But it is still a state function. This is still on your equation sheet. Change of delta G. So delta G for your reaction is still just products minus reactants to figure out how much the change is gonna be. Uh, if that then comes out to be negative, spontaneous, yay, which is great. All of our other <coughs> Uh, factors or all of our other spontaneous indicators still apply, right? So if your change in entropy is positive, that's spontaneous. If it's negative, it's non-spontaneous. That's for the change in entropy, right? Because we're always moving to more disorder. If you don't have any change in your entropy, there's no longer any measurable change in entropy occurring. That's because you're at equilibrium. It flips for our delta G. Delta G is less than zero or negative, <coughs> excuse me. 
it's going to be spontaneous. Greater than zero for a non-spontaneous. But again, if we're at equilibrium, delta G is going to equal zero. And this is nice because you'll notice it's all about the system. We're not worried about the, the surrounding so much. We can just look at all of our info from just our reaction to then decide this number, which then tells us whether it is spontaneous or not. So it's going to depend on what info you got as to whether or not you would use one set of information or the other, but it's going to be pretty similar in terms of the data that we're going to be manipulating to decide whether or not our reaction is spontaneous. Because it turns out we actually have values for this too. You may have noticed this on Appendix B already. Um, we have kind of the free energy of formation to go from our elements to our base compounds. You'll notice for our elements, there's not really any useful energy available because they already exist, right? The second we start looking at things that create our covalent bonds or ionic bonds, all of a sudden we're getting free energy being released, right? Negative delta G means we're releasing this free energy from our elements as they form their compounds. Diamond, you got to put some work in, right? So positive delta means you have to like compress, right? Pressure, temperature, you have to put work in, energy in to get your diamond to form, which makes sense. It's a positive value. But all of these values are numbers we have available to us and we can start to do some calculations based upon the free energy available to us. Come back early next week, we'll be looking at some of these, um, gearing up for hopefully our test before break. It's gonna be a little tight, we'll kind of see where we're at. Um, but yeah, looking at our free energies of our reactions.